it is extremely important that you select pole vaulters carefully. I don't really think that somebody who can't run or can't jump or is not coordinated is really well suited to the pole vault. So one of the things you might want to do is give them a little test. I believe the pole vaulter should be the best athlete on the team. I like to call in a great athlete. This is Aaron Mosier, who was an All-American decathlete for me at the University of Miami, a former football star for the Hurricanes. And he's going to help us demonstrate some easy tests that you can give your people to find out if they have an aptitude for pole vaulting. Since this is our sixth video on the pole vault, many of you have seen the other five, hopefully. What we found is that if the pole has a chance to rise, the vaulter has a chance to get into the pit, penetrate far enough into the pit that he won't get hurt, he won't fall on the box, or won't fall on this periphery area or in front of the box. What we do is this. We're going to go into greater detail about the technique shortly. We like the tip of the pole to land somewhere between the middle and the back one-third of the box. We like it as it slides back, the vaulter pushes the pole up, trying to get the pole to keep moving towards the vertical. Let he or she think about pushing the pole, the top of the pole, right over onto the back of the pit. Our method of vaulting delays the pole bend until the vaulter leaves the runway. The pole moves to the vertical quicker, allowing the vaulter to penetrate into the pit safely. The blue pole represents our method of pole vaulting, while the red pole shows an inefficient and dangerous way of vaulting. We will go into more detail during the plant section. The grip is the first part of the technique that we'll talk about today. It's important because the first step in building the continuous chain concept that we still use is without the proper grip, the next step of the chain will not be able to be built properly. So I'm going to bring Aaron in and we're going to talk a little bit about how we grip the pole. Let me just stop here. The top hand has the palm up. So you're showing me palm up where the front hand is palm down. So obviously for a right-handed vaulter, the top hand is your right hand is palm up, left hand is palm down, reverse for a left-handed vaulter. I like to do a little drill to see how wide does a vaulter hold the pole. That's one of the common questions we get. I like to take the pole, put the tip against the back of the box, and simulate a takeoff position. So that the top hand is in its proper position slightly in front and above of the head, and we run a straight line down through the toe, toe of the takeoff foot. That's an ideal takeoff position. From there, he reaches up, grabs the pole where he comfortably can, and that gives us the proper width of his grip. This factor will change depending on height of the athlete, shoulder flexibility, length of the arms, so there are some variables here. If his grip was too wide, what happens is the takeoff step moves too far inside and that puts the pole tip in the back of the box too early so as you can see the tip of the pole would not be able to move towards the vertical. By the same token, with too narrow a grip, the vaulter would be too far outside and you can see he's leaning down, he's not going to be able to continue to move the pole towards the vertical either. Should be gripped within 6 to 12 inches from the top of the pole for the athlete to get the benefit from that particular length of pole. If the athlete were to hold lower than that, they would be better off using a shorter pole.
Now that we've established a proper grip and width of grip, we're ready to move into the carry. The carry is a very important part of the overall vault because it puts the athlete in the correct posture and position to accelerate with the pole down the runway. As you can see, the pole is angled off to his left somewhat. Let me show the camera. Some people question, how high do we hold the pole? Some like to carry it straight up and down. Some like to carry it in intermediate position. Really, as long as the pole is carried high enough to free up the hip, hips and to alleviate the weight from making the vaulter lean forward is okay with us. Let's look at some incorrect carry positions. One would be where the pole is carried too low and you can see it makes the athlete lean over. Another is where the pole is carried too much down the right side, where the shoulders are now open to the side. It's going to be very difficult to plant or run effectively. These are some of the common tendencies we see in the pole carry. The approach run is perhaps the most important part of the vault period. Without a good approach run, there is not enough energy or power at takeoff to move the pole with a good grip to vertical. We spend a lot of time working and perfecting our approach runs. We like the run to be short and biting with the foot striking under the knee, pouring down, creating power to the ground. We teach the athlete to count their takeoff steps. We do this for two reasons. First, it helps build a steady, repeatable rhythm to their run. Second, it teaches the athlete when to plant the pole. It's important to remember that the approach run is not just a run. It has a purpose. The purpose of the approach run is to put the vaulter in a position to have a very powerful takeoff. Most high school athletes' approach runs are five to eight right steps for a left-handed vaulter, left steps for a right-handed vaulter. If the approach run is too long, the athlete tends to slow during the takeoff period, and that's a mistake. That's where injuries can occur. If your athlete accelerates fast, then they don't need as long of a run as another vaulter who may not accelerate quite as quickly. What we do is we put the pole in the back of the box, and we have the athlete get in their takeoff position. First thing we try to do is identify the proper takeoff point, which would be a straight line down from the top hand through the toe of the takeoff foot. We want to make sure that the top arm is slightly in front of the ear, in front of the head, and he's in good balance. Now we've got the correct takeoff position, we simply pivot around on the takeoff foot and run back to takeoff steps. With the approach run, we like to start off slowly and steadily build speed as we go down the runway so we reach maximum speed at the point of takeoff. Aaron's going to take a seven step approach run now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. This young vaulter's grip is too wide, causing the shoulders to turn to the side and swing the pole back and forth. Notice the shoulders leaning forward with the foot landing flat-footed below the knee. This robs the power of the approach run. Here is an example of an elite vaulter's approach run. Notice the carry position of the vaulter. The right arm is bent with the right hand slightly behind the hip, while the left hand forms a right angle at the elbow. Notice the excellent posture of the vaulter with the ball of the foot striking the ground below the knee.